Avenger, the force of evil. I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. So you want to play Dungeons and Dragons, but the only question is, what is D&D exactly? My understanding of Dungeons and Dragons is you and a group of friends go on an extraordinary adventure. A collaborative fiction game which mixes planning and chance. I would describe it as a game that is interactive and instead of being played like on a board or something, it's played sitting around a table like with people through interacting. I would create a game where I win everything. Simply put, Dungeons & Dragons is the best game ever, and playing it not only makes you a better storyteller, but a much better person. I know that's a pretty big claim for a board game, but let's talk about the history of D&D. So, back in the 1970s, a guy named Gary Gygax created a tabletop role-playing game, which eventually became what we now know as Dungeons & Dragons. It's a game where you and a group of friends all sit around a table, preferably with snacks, and pretend to go on an adventure. Unleash the power of your imagination. How you actually play the game is simpler than you might think. The game consists of two roles. There's the Dungeon Master, which is one person usually responsible for creating the overall world, complete with characters, stakes, and objectives. And then there are the players, which are the active participants in the world set by the Dungeon Master. Shirley, what do you want to do? I'd like to introduce myself to the group. Hello, I am a dwarf named zippity doo Okay, I'm not the best at making up names. Oh, hey, I'm Mar... Boy, you weren't kidding. It may sound like these two are competing against each other, but that's actually not the case at all. There's no winning D&D. That's not how that works. It's all about the experience. It's not about an endpoint. A lot of it is luck, but some is like kind of how we work with you, mm -hmm. right? A yeah. lot of it's kind of what you, de how you decide you want to kind of uh, lead us. And then a lot of it's left to chance by the role of Mm -hmm. The first step for the players in D&D is creating your character, which you have full control over. So my character is Tatsumi. I am an elvish sorcerer. She's a dragon rogue. Um, she wears couture. I'm playing a halfling grave cleric. Uh, her name is Sweet Baby Fur Shirt. The character that I played this time is named Luma. Not Luna with an N, but Luma. I just wanted to be creative. <laughs> and you as the dungeon master have to create and present to these players or these characters conflicts, whether it's combat or puzzles or just interacting with other characters. It falls on you as the dungeon master to make sure that these people are having a good time playing the game. And playing is as simple as rolling the dice. No, no. Now, I love video games, but no matter how big they claim to be or how much there is to do, you as a player are ultimately limited by how much a developer can program into the disc. Yes, there's a lot to do in games like Skyrim or GTA, but those games have their limit. In D&D, there's no limits. In Dungeons & Dragons, you can do whatever you want. But let's say you and a party go into a village and you just want to slap everybody, like literally every peasant who lives there. You can do that, you just have to roll for it. And depending on what you rolled, which is usually on a scale from 1 to 20, it determines how successful you are at what you chose to do. The dice act as the law of chance. Together when all of us are advocating for our own characters, plus chance, interesting things happen. Let's pretend we're playing a game and there's a dragon blocking your path. What are you going to do? If you're a fighter, you might want to challenge the dragon to a duel. If you're a rogue, maybe you'd want to sneak around it. Or if you're a bard, you might just want to talk to the dragon and try to persuade him to let you go through. All of these choices are completely tailored to who you are as a character and what you choose to do in the world that the dungeon master has set up. And it's the responsibility of the DM to honor your roles and respond truthfully under these imaginary circumstances. Whoa, that, that sounds a lot like acting. It's all about your imagination and you're not thinking at all. You're just having fun and interacting. Playing in a group of actors 
I think I see a real joy in making a big choice without knowing what will happen. You know, I find that after two hours, I've been lost in this world. D&D is so much more than just playing pretend. It's about who am I as a character and how do I interact with this person? It forces you to be impulsive and forces you to be in the moment. What's my place in the story? What do I want and how am I gonna get it? What is specific about this relationship? It's made me a much better listener to what is actually being said instead of what I expect to be said. Whatever you give me, I'm gonna return it right back to you with something else spectacular. It's not about what accent they have, it's not about what, how old they are, it's not even about what kind of being they are necessarily, but it's about what are they good at, what do they struggle with, how do they interact with other people, and what does that mean for the story? Obviously, you don't have to be an actor to play D&D. It's for everybody. I'm just of the belief that if you play, it's gonna make you a better one. I think everybody who says they're an actor or enjoys acting should at least try it out. If you don't even like it, that's fine too, but at the end of the day, you're sitting down around a table with friends, having snacks and laughs, and just playing a game. What better reason is there?